Hi, my name doesn't matter. Welcome to the deep end. Let's dive in. In Daniel chapter 4, we're confronted with this story told by Nebuchadnezzar. So the story goes like this. Nebuchadnezzar calls all his magicians together and tells them he has had a bad dream. He tells them all that he wants an interpretation from them and no one is able to give it. That is until Daniel comes along, shows up, gives the interpretation of the dream, and it's terrifying. You see, Nebuchadnezzar's dream was entirely about his downfall. The dream is of this giant tree that's going to be cut down and then an iron fence is going to be built around around it. Nebuchadnezzar is the tree that's going to be cut down. He's going to go crazy and he's going to live in the field eating grass like an ox. And then in verse 27 Daniel calls him to repent. Therefore O king let my counsel be acceptable to you. Break off your sins by practicing righteousness and your iniquities by showing mercy to the oppressed that there may perhaps be a lengthening of your prosperity. The call to repentance is not merely stop doing wickedness but instead did you catch it is practice Practice righteousness and show mercy to the oppressed. The call to repentance is a call to practice righteousness, to do what is good. So Daniel gives him a very clear call to repentance. And then immediately following that call, it says, All this came upon Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of 12 months, he was walking on the roof of his royal palace in Babylon. And the king answered and said, Is not this the great Babylon which I have built by my mighty power as a royal residence and for the glory of my majesty? So there's a few things we can see here about the human heart's rebellion. The first thing we see is that a lot of it has to do with a perspective. Nebuchadnezzar is standing on his palace looking down at the kingdom of the earth and he is not looking up to the kingdom of heaven. So just think about this for a moment. The kingdom of heaven encompasses the stars and the clouds and the sky and the mountains and the earth and Nebuchadnezzar has the nerve to stand on top of his palace and look out at a city and say I have built this for my majesty and how great it is. So the first thing wrong with this entire issue with Nebuchadnezzar is the same thing that's wrong in us. It's a perspective problem. We look at the perspective of this earth and what we ought to be doing is looking at the heavens and seeing the eternal perspective that God has. Because if we would, these little things that we see here would not be as impressive nor as important as we make them out to be. So the first first thing we see in the nature of rebellion is that we stand looking down. It's almost as if we are looking at our shoes and in looking at our shoes we can't see anything else and we think to ourselves how big we must be because our shoes are small in our eyes. Now that's absurd. No one would actually say that they're huge because they're looking at their own shoes. But that is what you are doing when you look at the things around you and say that God is not big enough to handle them or God is not strong enough to handle them or that God is somehow less than the glory of this earth that we sit on. Second thing Nebuchadnezzar does is he stands in exaltation of himself. He stands on a rooftop and he looks down and he's exalting himself saying, this is mine, mine, mine. You saw it was repeated, which I have built by my mighty power, by my mighty residence, for the glory of my majesty. So he exalts himself here and says that he is the one that all this is for. And you see, the problem is not that Nebuchadnezzar is abnormally exalting himself. He's simply doing what all of us do, which is to stand, look at our shoes, and say how great we are. When the call from God is to look at heaven and see how massive and how great he is, and in turn, turn to him and and rejoice and see the greatness of God. The third thing we see Nebuchadnezzar doing here is giving tacit approval to unrighteousness. Remember the call to repent. Practice righteousness by showing mercy to the oppressed. Inherent in this call to repent is the idea that Nebuchadnezzar has not been showing mercy to the oppressed. So he is giving approval to a kingdom, a perspective that he is calling mighty and great. And he's giving approval to the unrighteousness righteousness that happens in the kingdom of Babylon, this kingdom that is so small compared to God's kingdom. This man went nuts. Now I propose to you that this is the same thing we see happening in the world today. We are being driven nuts by our disobedience, by our rebellion, by our self 
seeking exaltation. You see, in our country, we've got church leaders and political leaders who are doing the exact same thing Nebuchadnezzar did. They're walking around insane on top of their roofs, looking down on the world and saying, look at how great I am. I tell you, if we persist, God will punish us. You see, the only hope is that what happens to Nebuchadnezzar here would happen to us and that we would see God and we would take our eyes off our shoes and we'd stop looking at this and we'd see God for who he is and recognize the power and might of his glory. That's our only hope, that we would stop looking at our shoes and stop looking at the kingdoms that we built and raise our eyes to heaven and see the glory of eternity and recognize God for who he is. Thanks for joining me in the deep end. Now go get to work.